abdomen is home to a number of important and necessary organs. It extends from the diaphragm at the top to the pelvis at the bottom. The abdominal wall is divided by four imaginary lines into nine compartments. This division helps in the differential diagnosis of various pathological conditions affecting the internal organs of the abdomen, as each room contains a specific organs. The upper right chamber contains the right lobe of the liver and gallbladder. The epigastric region contains the left lobe of the liver, the pancreas, the stomach, the ventral part of esophagus, and part of the small intestine, known as the duodenum. The left upper chamber contains the spleen, the left and right middle chambers contains the kidneys, and the umbilical region contains the small intestine. The lower right chamber contains the appendix and ovaries in females, while the hypogastric region contains the bladder and uterus in females. As for the colon, it extends throughout the abdomen except for the umbilical area, thus making the pain resulting from its disease present anywhere in the abdomen. The most important concern in medical practice is the symptoms of the epigastric and the upper right region because they make up most of the patient's complaints. Typically, abdominal pain is caused by something relatively minor, such as a pulled muscle, and will go away on its own in a few days. But it becomes serious when accompanied by other symptoms such as fever, nausea, vomiting, yellowing of the skin, or jaundice, bloody stools, or bloody vomits. The most common diseases that affect the right upper region are biliary colic, cholecystitis, and hepatitis. Gallstones are solid deposits of bile and other digestive fluid that form in your gallbladder, a 4-inch pear-shaped organ that's located right below your liver. They are one of the most common causes of pain on the right side of your upper abdomen. They may not always lead to symptoms, but if gallstones block the duct, the gallbladder will contract, trying to expel the stone, and this may cause you to feel upper abdominal pain, accompanied with pain in right shoulder, nausea, and relaxing vomiting. This condition is called biliary colic. Biliary colic often come after eating a fatty meal, as the gallbladder contracts to empty its contents of bile which is responsible for digesting fats, and the pain may last for several minutes to a few hours. Patients often see a doctor after experiencing several episodes separated by different times. Your doctor may ask for an abdominal ultrasonography to evaluate the stones and prescribes medication to dissolve gallstones, but that treatment process may take months or years to work. In some cases, Biliary colic develops into cholecystitis, which is the inflammation of the gallbladder, where its wall is damaged by the trapped bile and growing bacteria. The main symptoms in cholecystitis is fever and prolonged severe pain, which lasts more than six hours. Cholecystitis is an immediate indication to cholecystectomy, which is the removal of the gallbladder surgically, and medicine treatment doesn't help. The second most important cause of pain in the upper right side of the abdomen is acute hepatitis. And the most common cause is the hepatitis A virus. Hepatitis A is a highly contagious infection caused by contaminated food or water by the virus or by contact with an infected person or infected object. Infection with hepatitis A begins with a general flu-like symptoms such as fever generalized abdominal pain and sore throat. Within two weeks, it turns into pain in the upper right accompanied with a jaundice, dark-colored urine, itchy skin, weakness and fatigue. Symptoms usually last for several weeks, and healing is achieved by resting in bed, drinking more fluids and eating a healthy balanced diet.
Among the other important abdominal complaints is the epigastric pain, and the main causes are GERD, peptic ulcers, and pancreatitis. GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease is a condition where the stomach acid retrograde back to the esophagus and irritate the lining. GERD can lead to heartburn, which you may feel moving up from your stomach and into your chest. This can cause you to feel pain in your upper abdomen. Other symptoms of a GERD can include swallowing problems, backflow of food or sour liquid, a feeling of having a lump in the throat and chronic cough. The treatment for GERD is usually conservative by adopting healthy eating habits such as reducing the meal size and avoid laying down after eating. Another important cause for upper abdominal pain is peptic ulcer, which is an open sore that happens either on the side of your stomach's lining or the upper part of your small intestine. They can be caused by a bacterial infection or long-term use of aspirin and certain pain relievers. Peptic ulcers can lead to burning stomach pain, which you will feel on the left side of your upper abdomen. It's usually accompanied with a feeling of fullness, bloating, intolerance of fatty foods, and heartburn. The treatment is by taking antiacids like omeprazole and ranitidine for several weeks until the ulcer is fully cured. The pancreas also participates in the epigastric pain with pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is the inflammation of the pancreas and can be acute or chronic. It often occurs in alcoholic people, as alcohol is the primary cause of pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis presents with severe upper pain that may spread to the back accompanied with fever, nausea, and unrelaxing vomiting. While chronic inflammation often presents with vague pain and a sense of heaviness in the upper region, accompanied by fatigue and chronic digestive problems, the treatment is by rapid reparation of fluids and electrolytes, in addition to anti-inflammatory drugs, until the patient's condition stabilizes and the inflammation recedes. Finally, irritable bowel syndrome is one of the most common digestive diseases that affect the colon. This disorder results from a defect in the innervation of the colon's muscles, resulting in random contraction in its wall, causing pain and bloating because of gas retention. The cause of this defect is not precisely known, and the psychological factor is highly involved. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your family or friends. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell.